Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. Today we're talking stop motion transitions in Apple Motion. If you've seen my Waco, Texas video, link in the description below, you might have noticed a couple things. New techniques to clean up audio, especially noisy environments, new color grading techniques, and what we're talking about today, which is stop motion transitions and titles. Now, as always, if you're supporting me on Patreon already, link in the description again, you already have access to all of these plugins, and so I'll show you how to use them, but you can just drop them right in. If you aren't supporting me on Patreon, I'm gonna show you the basic steps to make your own stop motion transitions in Apple Motion and bring them over to Final Cut Pro. Let's jump right into it. To start off, let me show you what you get if you just go over to Patreon and download these finished transitions. There's a couple different variations. There's crumple in, crumple out, and then page roll across. But you can see as I dump it onto my project here, it just has this nice animated sort of stop motion feel to the paper. And if we click on the transition itself, you can see that there's a couple parameters that actually makes this effect really powerful. We can colorize the black and white values to give it a really different feel. So it's always going to be paper-like, but maybe you want it to look more like black cardstock, or maybe it's a red paper, maybe you're doing like a howler letter from Harry Potter and you need the red paper effect. Whatever it might be, right, you have a couple different options here and it makes this uh, transition really flexible. All right, so now that you see how it works once you've built it, I wanna show you how to build it. So we're gonna start over here in Pixelmator Pro. If you don't have it already, link in the description below. I've already got this picture loaded up of a crumpled piece of paper. For the real thing, I actually just sat some paper on the floor and took pictures of it with my camera. And once I had each individual image loaded into Pixelmator, the first goal was just to cut out the paper, which is really easy using the quick selection brush. You can just paint over the top, and most of the time Pixelmator is able to figure out where the edges of your object are, and you can use that to mask. And your selection doesn't have to be perfect first try. In fact, you can just adjust the brush size to change its sensitivity, and you can use Option or Shift to add or remove things from your selection. Once you have a selection you're happy with, you just come over here to the layer, right click it, and add a mask. And then you can export it as a PNG with transparency that you can then bring in to Apple Motion. For my actual animation, I had about six or seven different pictures that I had to do this process on, each one representing a different stage of the animation that you can see here imported into Apple Motion. Once you have your pictures in Apple Motion, adding them to the timeline is simple. You just drag them down, make sure you have them in the right order, and by default, they're going to fill up the entire timeline. Now, it's very important to make sure that you use the duration of each of these layers to control whether they're visible or not. If you use keyframes or similar to show and hide different layers, once a transition is put into Final Cut Pro, it can get resized, which means that even a keyframe that is zero frames long will get stretched out over a long enough transition, which is not what we want. We want it to feel like stop motion, and this is the only way to effectively get that. Once you have your images being revealed in the right order, and it feels like a nice animation that's playing back at a speed you like, the next step is to mask out the different layers for the drop zone transitions. You can see if I click through each of these Bezier masks, that really all I did was I took the Bezier tool and just drew a rough outline around the edge of the paper. As with keeping the stop motion feel of the paper images, it's important that you use the same technique and apply multiple Bezier masks. The reasoning is the same reasoning as what we used for the stop motion papers. You don't want to see the control points sliding into place if somebody messes with the duration. And with that, we've got a finished paper effect. And that's it for our tutorial. If you found these helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Your support really does mean the world to me. And if you'd like to take your support to the next level, as well as get some goodies along the way, including complete project files and plugins, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks, we'll catch you on the next one.